Hello guys, this is a part of wireless LAN video series on securitytube.net. In this video, I will be talking more about virtual carrier sensing mechanisms in IEEE 802.11 protocol, more commonly known as the working of NAV field. Let's start with some basic idea about this duration or ID field. So simply, what does this duration or ID field contain? In control frames of subtype PS pole, that is power save pole, the field contains the AID or association ID of the station who is transmitting that frame and in all other packets other than this PS pole, the field contents are used to set the nav according to some rules. Now the table below shows how the decision is made simply. Now if you see this particular row, the higher two bits, the, the higher order two bits if they are set to one and lower order 0 to 13 bits are in between 1 and 2007 then that particular field will be taken for AID in PS4 packet and if 0 to 13 bits are anywhere beyond 2007 it's a reserved value and it will not be used for parsing anymore similarly if upper 2 bits are 1 and lower 2 bits are all zeros that's also a reserved condition if only uppermost bit is set to 1 and the 14th bit is set to 0 and all other bits are in between 1 and 16383 then it is again a reserved case now this case is very important case if bit 15 is set and bit 14 is set to 0 bit 13 as well is set to 0 or bit 0 to 13 is are as well set to 0 then it's a fixed value within the frames transmitting during the CFP. The CFP mode is a spatial mode in IEEE 802.11 and if only MSB is set and all other bits are resetted to zero, it's a CFP case and this is the case which is used for calculating duration value. The MSB is set to zero and bits between zero and 14 will be in between 0 and 32767 then that's the duration case so simply a simple thing to remember if uppermost bit, bit is set to 0 then all lower 14 bits are used to calculate the duration value in the frame usage and implementation of the nav nav or network allocation vector is the mechanism provided for virtual carrier sensing in IEEE 802.11. NAV maintains the prediction of future traffic on the medium. So higher NAV value can be predicted as a tra expected traffic on IEEE 802.11 media. NAV is a counter which counts down to zero at a uniform rate and counter when equal to zero is an indication of the idle medium. Station receiving a valid frame updates the NAV value from the duration ID field if and only if NAV in the packet is greater than the current NAV value of that station and packet is not addressed for receiving for that station. In the next slide, we will be talking about an example for this statement. When operating in CFP mode, some more condition may set or reset the NAV value. Okay. Let's see one example of the NAV value. Example. In this example, Alice is transmitting a packet on channel 1 to Bob. Now the source address will be the Alice machine's address and destination address will be Bob's machine address. Now in this packet, the duration value is set to 32767. Now on the same channel, Charlie is also present and there is one more guy, Dev, who is present on some other channel which is not same as Alice and Bob's channel say Alice and Bob are on channel 1 and Dave is on channel 6 now the question is after transmission of this packet the nav value of each one will be what now our rule says all the machines will update the nav value if the nav value in that packet is more than the, the than the current nav value for that machine and only that machine will not update nav value for which the packet is intended. So simple, Bob will not update the nav value as the destination address was Bob's address. Bob will not update the nav value. Charlie will update that nav value to 32767 
as the Charlie's NAV value cannot be more than 32767 because the maximum NAV value allowed is 32767. So Charlie has to upgrade its NAV to, to, to 32767. And there is no question of Dave updating the NAV value because Dave is on channel 6. Dave will not be, in ideal case, Dave will not be receiving the packet which is transmitted by the Alice and Dave will not update his NAV value. Okay. After transmission of that packet, Bob will receive the packet and his NAV value will be 0. Charlie will receive the packet and his NAV value will be 32767 and Dave will not receive that packet and his NAV value will be 0. So NAV value equal to 0 means station can transmit the packet and NAV value is equal to some X value which is not equal to 0 or more than 0 means for the X time units the station cannot send any packet. So when Alice is sending some packet to Bob with some high NAV value only Bob can transmit any further packets in that amount of period and all the machines which are present on that channel have to keep quiet for that amount of period. So what will be the usage of this NAV value? Let's see in next slide. Now a very well known and famous example where this NAV value is used is the hidden node problem. In hidden node problem station 1 and station 3 wants to send a packet to station 2 but unfortunately station 1 and station 3 are not able to see each other. Now if they end up sending the packet at the same time there will be collision at, at the end of station 2 and station 2 will not be able to receive either packets and it is highly likely that the same case will happen again and again to solve this problem actually RTS CTS fields are used and exactly how this problem is solved I will be explaining in one more video but the NAV value is used so that there can be some arbitration between the two stations sending the packets. Thank you for this video. Feel free to watch other videos on securitytube.net. There are many videos on wireless as well as wired and wireless network security. Thank you.